How you going guys and welcome back to another video. Now on this one we will be painting Shenky Garage's HX One Tonner. Now we're going to be doing it in the uh, DNA Paint Yellow Vortex Candy Base Coat. Now with that said guys, uh, I want to show you a cool little box which I've brought up to Brisbane. Um, let's have a look right now. Alrighty guys, so here we have the uh, Welcome uh, Spray Gun Evolution box. So uh, whenever you buy all four spray guns by uh, Welcome, it comes in a hard storage box like this. Perfect if you're someone like myself that likes to travel around and paint cars for people. Now inside, um, I've got four spray guns. Um, actually no, sorry, three spray guns. It holds four. Um, so the guns that we will be using to paint Sam's HX1 Tunner. Uh, first of all, uh, for the sill panels underneath the car, all those tight little areas which are Sometimes a little bit hard to get when you've got a big gun, uh, like a normal size gun. Um, we've got the Ego 190 here. So this is a full carbon fiber gun. Uh, current setup at the moment is 0 0.7. It's a HTE spray gun. Uh, I usually use this gun when I'm painting virtual chrome, um, but we obviously not painting virtual chrome today. So I've actually got um, underneath my GoPro here in that little uh, box. I'll show you that maybe a little bit later. I've got a, a 1.2 setup. Um, now carrying on, um, so that's going to be used for all the tight areas like your seal panels and stuff like that. Uh, it saves um, having a bit of trouble with a larger gun. Now uh, for the base coat, we've got the, um, the Slim Combat. I've got this in 1.2, uh, sorry, 1.3 on this one, uh, 1.3. Um, so I'll put some uh, gun settings up on the screen if you guys are curious to know my gun setup um, for uh, the base coat application. Now. Um, we've also got the carbon fiber, uh, the Carbonio 360 Evo. Now this gun, I've got it in 1.2. This will be my clear coat gun for this job. Um, fantastic gun, can't speak highly enough about every single gun here that I'm showing you. Um, mainly the uh, 360 Evo, it's a fantastic gun, I love it. Uh, I speak it very highly about that in all my videos. Um, so yeah, look, we've got uh, a couple of spray suits here. Um, which uh, DNA has given us. We've got two large, uh, one for Sam and one for myself. Uh, let's jump inside the booth. Uh, Sam's just been given a, a, a bit of a once over, a bit of a prep sole, and uh, I've just finished doing all the seam sealing on the back panel. Let's go take a look. Right, guys so that's what the car looks like it's all masked up um, what I'm gonna do now is throw a spray suit on I've got a couple of small minor little rub throughs in the primer so I'll be going around with a 1k um, uh, like primer etch can in one of the previous videos I put some text up on the screen saying that we should have primed the whole car due to the amount of product that was on the car and also the repairs that needed doing all over the car now, due to the time factor um, of uh, this build that we uh, didn't really have a lot of time, um, we only really repaired the areas that we uh, needed to, um, which has actually snowballed so many different, um, or it's, it's actually snowballed in so many different areas uh, throughout this whole weekend. If something was ever gonna happen uh, in a bad way, it was gonna happen, and it actually continued into the painting process. Now, the color on the car is a candy base coat. Now, when you have a rub through on a candy base coat, um, even if you put a 1K primer over those rub throughs to try and seal it down, being that it's a candy, uh, you actually get candy bleed. Now, as an example, if you were to paint your car in a red candy and go and put a white base coat over the top, your white base coat will get candy bleed and turn pink. So that's what happened on this. We had... Uh, yellow areas bleeding through into the white even with a 1k primer so to fix that issue um, i mixed up some uh, 2k um, wet on wet primer which i had to borrow from the panel shop owner um, in order for me to fix this so we could get the candy base coat laid down and the job painted uh, just to cover those rub throughs i'll give it a bit of a tickle with some sandpaper before i go and start applying my white base coat so white is the ground coat for the yellow Vortex Candy Base Coat. 
Um, yeah, I'm not going to be doing too much talking in this video. I may do a voiceover. Uh, so yeah, uh, let's get into it. Alrighty guys, this is the fun part. This is the part that I really love about doing resprays. Getting that uh, custom clear on dead flat and dead even and making the whole car look like a shed of glass. Now, I actually had a heap of trouble. This spray booth was an absolute pain to paint in. Um, the extraction wasn't very strong in the booth and uh, you'll see me stop and start a fair bit on this back panel and on the back of the cab due to uh, the 
cloud of paint in front of me. Uh, I just simply couldn't see anything that I was doing on the back panel and the back of the cab. Um, so that's why you see me stop and start a few times and uh, uh, you'll see me lose my temper a couple of times. I'm very frustrated. Uh, it's very late. It's been a huge weekend and I just want to get this car painted and um, yeah, the vent, uh, sorry, the extraction was just slowing me down. Uh, you'll see me shake my head a few times, um, but yeah, it's almost done guys. I can't wait to show you what the ute looks like when it's all done.
All right, guys, so uh, just finished painting uh, the yellow Vortex Keeney base coat by Dino Paints. Um, had a little bit of trouble uh, getting it down even, had a little bit of model issues. Um, I was using slow reducer and uh, I used the slow FX hardener with the custom clear. Uh, managed to lay it all down. Uh, there was a few little tricks which I know which made it probably go a little bit more smoothly than um, it may have for someone else, um, but yeah, we managed to get it done. Uh, we've got Sam here having a look. What do you reckon, Sam? It's bloody awesome. I'm stoked on that, like compared to what it was. Um, and obviously painting the second time, it's not ideal, but yeah, I'm, I'm super stoked. I knew what it was meant to look like, and this is exactly, um, you know, this is exactly as I'd imagine it was is meant to look like. Yeah, what it was meant to look like the yeah. first time. Yeah, yeah. so. <laughs> Yeah, look, been a lot of, a lot of lessons learned and um, it's yeah, big, been a big four days, but we got it done and I'm super stoked on, on that on that result. So yeah, all good. Yeah, cool. Yeah, and it has been a bit of a roller coaster, guys. Um, yeah, I just yeah. Um, it was meant to just be like a, a quick sand down and paint, hey Sam, and then I kind of ran my eyes over it and I'm like, yeah, I'll, I can pick on that, I can pick on that. Yeah. And we ended up spending, oh, as, as an, an educated guest, probably between 38 and maybe 45 hours, something around those kind of hours, something like that, yeah. uh, to get it repaired, primed, epoxied, like uh, rust treated, you name it, like has gone into this. Um, to fix probably the, I guess, the easiest things that can be fixed on it. And, uh, yeah, we managed to get it painted. So uh, we'll do a little bit of a walk around. The lighting in this booth, they're running some old uh, fluoros, which is why the camera flickers just like that. I do apologise. They need to update to LEDs. Um, but, yeah, uh, this is it, guys. So, um, actually, do you want to grab that sun torch? Yeah. The sun torch. I think it's just in the paint room now, I think. <laughs> Um, so I managed, I did have a bit of trouble with like model on the roof um, and I, what I ended up doing, so um, I, um, Sam didn't really want me to talk about it um, on social media until he kind of made his mind up, um, but I, um, I kind of wanted to put a metal flake over the candy base coat. Um, and Sam was all for it, and then he kind of seen a spray it. Hey, Sam, and you kind of, it kind of changed your mind a little bit. Hey. Yeah, I guess it was just another thing, another variable that I kind of <laughs> could go really wrong. Add into the mix. Um, yeah. And I guess, yeah, it was probably maybe a good decision not doing it. I suppose, yeah. but yeah, yeah, it would have been cool to do, but um, but yeah, I think it just wasn't worth you know the extra stuff around on it. Not like it would yeah. be a lot of stuff in around, but yeah, it was just like an extra coat with like the flake in the binder. That's all it would have been, but um, yeah, uh, it just, I mean, the time that it's taken me to do this is probably, probably just over five hours to do this. Um, and yeah, I mean, it is what it is. Um, we've got a nice result and uh, I'll grab the light off Sam there. So extremely vibrant. It's, uh, it's gonna be, uh, yeah, very, very vibrant outside. Uh, that bloody LED flickering is so annoying. Um, but yeah, so yeah, this is it guys. So um, the yellow vortex. Um, at a scale, look, I've painted this color quite a few times at work, obviously, um, but never painted it on a full car. Um, now, out of a scale of probably one to 10, 10 being really difficult, one being super easy, I would honestly, I would probably have to say maybe it's probably around that seven and a half, maybe eight. Um, it's not super difficult, um, like um, a candy can be, but um, yeah, probably, yeah. Um, I did have a little bit of like trouble, but um, I guess I got the knowledge to kind of fix it and know how to get myself out of a wet paper bag, I, I guess you could say. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, it's turned out really, really nice. There's the bloody flickering again, but yeah, no doubt we'll uh, throw some footage up uh, maybe a bit later or maybe in another video of it outside. Um, but there, that's pretty much it, guys.